dive into these cards. Pre-release is this weekend. So go to your LGS, get your pre-release kit, and get ready to play some March of the Machine. Um, I just wanted to start out with talking about our new merch shop. Um, right here, Equipped Creatures is live. Bonfire.com slash store slash equip. We've got a Zendikar series. Um, we've got a nice Mana Dork shirt. We've got uh, a working Kamigawa series. We're not done yet. We've got three of the colors from Kamigawa. We've got a Wrath of God shirt. Pretty awesome. And then we've got some some keywords. Uh, we've got Trample and Defender and Hexproof and Lifelink. We've got a Boro shirt, a Fetchland shirt. I'd rather be in exile. Don't mana splain. Aggro AF. Flunge. And of course, Mommy's world's best boss mug. Check out bonfire.com slash store slash equip. I have not made a chat command for that, but um, there you go. <laughs> I should do that. Anyway, let's jump right in. I'm very excited to look at all of the mommy stuff. And, you know, we're going to do this like we usually do. A little bit. Um, we'll go slowly through each card. We'll take some breaks in between colors. Stand up, stretch our legs a little bit and... And we'll get through this. I need to give um, the pup his pill in about an hour. So maybe we'll make it through white by then. Um, yeah, let me see. That chat thing is not going away. Hold on one sec. Let me see if I can set that. Is that set to always show? And now it's not loading at all. Great. Cool. I guess I can just take it away. All right. So our first card up is called Aerial Boost. It is one and a white for an instant with Convoke. So this is a new uh, returning mechanic for March of the Machine. Um, your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this pays for one or one colorless or one mana of that creature's color and then this instant gives target creature plus two plus two and gains flying until end of turn pretty cool nice little combat trick our second card is alabaster host intercessor what a name five and a white for a three four phyrexian samurai when Alabaster Host Intercessor enters the battlefield, exile target creature card and opponent controls until Alabaster leaves the battlefield. And it's got plane cycling, so they're bringing back specific land cycling as well. So you can pay to discard Alabaster Host Intercessor and search your library for a basic planes card, which is pretty cool. Uh, it looks like this Phyrexian Samurai is about to kill a little fox. That's sad. Um, yeah, interesting. So host intercessor is what a, there's so many S sounds in that name is a nice little banishing card with some plane cycling. So it's really expensive and it's at common, so it'll come up a lot, but not really worth it. We've got another Alabaster, Host Sanctifier. One and a white for a 2-2 Phyrexian Cleric with lifelink. That's pretty good. Angelic Intervention. Big story spotlight here. One and a white for an instant. Target creature or a planeswalker you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice until end of turn. If it's a creature, put a 1-1 counter on it. Pretty good. Next up, we've got Archangel Elspeth, the big savior of the day in the mom story. Shout out to um, our YouTube. Shout out to our YouTube channel. <laughs> um, 
we've been posting the March of the Machine story narrated by me on our YouTube channel. If you're interested in listening to the story of this set, definitely go to our YouTube, check it out, listen to those videos. It's an amazing story. You won't be disappointed. Um, so El Archangel Elspeth is two white white for a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus one, create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. That's pretty good. Minus two, put two uh, one one counters on target creature. It becomes an angel in addition to its other types and gains flying. That's pretty good. Minus six, return all non land permanents with the mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Dang. So you can do that three turns after you play it. That's pretty good. If you've got to proliferate spells too, you can do that even faster. That's uh, pr that's pretty powerful. I think that's going to be a... This plus the Wandering Emperor in Standard is going to be pretty good. Next up, we've got Attentive Sky Warden. Two and a white for a 2-2 two -two Phyrexian Core with Flying. Whenever Attentive Sky Warden deals combat damage to a player or battle, transform up to one target incubator token you control. So one of the other, we'll probably get to it uh, shortly, but one of the other mechanics is an incubator system, and we'll talk about that when we see it. Uh, next up, we've got Bola Slinger. Three and a white for a 2-2 Cat Soldier with backup one. So this is another uh, mechanic that's fresh for... March of the Machine. Uh, when this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following ability until end of turn. So you play a creature with backup 1. That means you give 1 counter. You can put it on Bola Slinger, or you can put it on another creature, say something that doesn't have summoning sickness. And then it gains the Bola Slinger's ability or whatever card you played with backup until end of turn. So whenever this creature attacks, tap target artifact or creature an opponent controls. So you play this pre-combat, give this ability to something else, and then attack with that something else and use this ability right away. It's a kind of a fun way to, to pass the abilities around. Um, I think it's going to make for some pretty unique... Um, gameplay decisions and i think that there's a ton of cards with backup on it so it's going to make the thought process of how to use these cards even more intriguing next up we've got boon bringer valkyrie three white white for a four four angel warrior with backup one and its abilities are flying first strike and lifelink so you can play this again pre-combat give all those abilities plus a one one counter to something else that's pretty good. Then we've got Cut Short. Um, I'm not sure why this doesn't have a story spotlight marker on it, but uh, this is the big moment in the story. Uh, two and a white for an instant with Convoke. Again, Convoke means that each creature you tap while casting this can pay for one colorless or one mana of that creature's color. Um, cut Short says, Destroy target Planeswalker that was activated this turn or tapped creature. That's pretty powerful for three mana with Convoke. So you could even cast this for free if you had a bunch of untapped creatures. Um, that's pretty awesome. Destroy target Planeswalker that was activated this turn. That means no matter how powerful and how many loyalty counters you have on your Planeswalker, you have to be cautious about when you activate it. I think that adds an interesting dynamic. Next up, we've got Dusk Legion Duelist. Oh, they look so upset. They look so sad. One and a white for a 2-2 two -two vampire soldier with vigilance. Whenever one or more 1-1 one -one counters are put on Dusk Legion Duelist, draw a card. This ability only triggers once each turn. So this is a pretty good thing to put your backup counter on when you play something with backup. If you play something with backup, Put your counter on Dusk Legion Duelist. Draw a card. It's a nice little synergy. Um, it is a 2-2 for 2 with Vigilance, so it's it makes sense that it's a rare. Next up, we've got Mommy herself. So all of the five Praetors are in this set again. 
new versions, and they all have flip sides with a saga on them. So we'll check that out in a sec. So Elish Norn is two white white for a 3-5 legendary Phyrexian Praetor with Vigilance. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a permanent you control, that source's controller loses two life unless they pay one. And then you pay two and a white, sacrifice three other creatures, exile Elish Norn, then return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control, activate at sorcery speed. So flipping these are going to be a little bit tricky, especially Elish. I think Elish Norn is the hardest one to flip, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I've tried not to read the cards uh, too rigorously throughout the spoiler season because I want to do this with a fresh set of eyes. Um, so when you do sacrifice three creatures, pay three mana, um, Elish Norn flips into the Argent Etchings as the saga enters as the saga enters and after your draw step, add a lore counter. It's just a normal saga. So this first set says incubate two five times. So incubation is, again, a token that says Phyrexian incubator. And when you incubate two, it means you put two counters on your incubator. Then you have to pay two mana to flip over your incubator and it becomes a Phyrexian creature with two counters on it. This says incubate two five times, so you get five tokens with two counters on them. And then chapter two is creatures you control get one one and gain double strike until end of turn. Cool. And then chapter three says destroy all other permanents except for artifacts, lands, and Phyrexians. Exile the Argent Etchings, then return it to the battlefield. And then you play, it comes back as Elish Norn again, and you do the whole cycle over. So you have to pay and sacrifice things to flip it into the saga. You get a bunch of cool stuff. Um, actually, the first chapter says transform all incubator tokens you control. So you incubate five times and then immediately transform them all for free. Usually you have to pay two in order to transform your incubators. Um, that's really cool. That's really powerful. And then it flips back to Elish Norn, and you do the whole thing again. Our next card is Elspeth Smite. For one white, it's an instant. Deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. If that creature would die, exile it instead. Pretty good. A big story moment there. It's funny that Elspeth Smite doesn't actually kill Elish Norn. I guess in the story, it, Elspeth doesn't kill Elish Norn either, so. Pretty neat card. Enduring Bond Warden. One white for an 0-1 human scout with backup one. Its backup ability is when this creature dies, put its counter on target creature you control. Oh, cool. So it can, like, bounce the backup counter back onto something else. That's not bad. Next up, we've got Golden Scale Aeronaut, four and a white for a two, three dwarf pilot with backup one. It's got its backup ability is flying a two, three with flying for five. I mean, really, you're playing this for the backup cost or the backup ability. You want to give that flying counter to something else to get through. Um, not great. Guardian of Girapur, two and a white for a three, three angel creature with flying when guardian enters the battlefield exile up to one target creature or artifact you control return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step so it's a pause blink effect um a three three for three with flying is gonna be good no matter what this is a good card next up we've got heliod the radiant dawn so there's a bunch of these transform cards as well we'll see them throughout all the colors um as we go through all of these cards. Heliod the Radiant Dawn is two white white for a 4-4 four, four legendary enchantment creature god. When Heliod enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card that isn't a god from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. So it can't bounce itself if you have another copy, but not bad. And then for three and a Phyrexian blue, which means you can pay either one blue mana or two life 
um, which is great because that means if you're playing limited or cons um, constructed, you don't have to put this in a blue deck. You don't have to have blue mana. You can put this in a straight white deck and it'll still be all right. Um, so you pay three and a Phyrexian blue. Transform Heliod. Activate only as a sorcery. I believe all of these transformation cards are sorcery speed only. I might be wrong. It turns into Heliod the Warped Eclipse. It is a legendary enchantment creature. Phyrexian God. You may cast spells as though they had flash. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card in your each card your opponents have drawn this turn. So every time your opponents draw, your card gets one cheaper. That's pretty handy. Next up, we've got Infected Defector. That's fun to say, Infected Defector. All of these commons are so expensive. Four and a white for a 4-3 Phyrexian Knight. When Infected Defector dies, incubate three. So here, this is, we finally get the rules text for incubation. Um, create an incubator token with three 1-1 one, one counters on it because it says incubate three specifically. The incubate number is how many counters you put on it. Um, and the token says, pay to transform this artifact. It transforms into a 0-0 Phyrexian artifact creature. So it's important to note that all of these incubator tokens turn into artifacts, creatures. They are artifacts on the battlefield, and then they turn into artifact creatures when you flip them. That's going to be important for affinity decks. Stuff like that. Pretty good. Not too bad. Uh, next up, we've got Inspired Charge. This is a cool piece of art. Uh, it's an in two white white for an instant. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. That's not good. That's not a good card, but it might do some work. Might. I don't know. It's it's a decent game ender if you've got a large board. Um but I wouldn't count on it too much. And uh, wait a second. This is oh. This got in here backwards. Okay. So this is our first battle. So these are a new... Can I actually... Oh! Okay. This is going to be a little awkward when we do the battles. Um, maybe I should have done this before. So battles are a new card type. They, these ones specifically are called sieges. So we're going to see other battles in the future um and they might not be sieges so keep in mind that the siege rules are for these cards specifically any battles in the future might be a different battle type so they might not have the same rules as the siege um so when in this is called invasion of belanon two and a white for a battle siege as a siege enters, choose an opponent to protect it. You and others can attack it. When it's defeated, exile it and then cast it transformed. When Invasion of Belenon enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 white and blue knight creature token with vigilance. So this... Hold on. I need to make sure my pup isn't doing anything dumb. Fritz. What are you doing? Hey, he's just scrounging. Um, is this just better if I leave it on side? I guess it might be. Um, so this battle has five power, loyalty, whatever, five health. And it's up to you as the caster of the battle to do that damage. So you want to cast these preferably before combat. 
you assigned your opponent to be the one to protect it and then you immediately attack it it's like giving your opponent a planeswalker with no abilities there they can block it or not as they see fit obviously they want to block it um, and protect it for as long as possible because as soon as you get that five down to a zero you flip it and it becomes whatever the beneficial backside is um and so you get a white knight token when it enters and then if you defeat it uh, it flips to Bellinan war anthem so you get this as soon as you defeat the battle and it's a uh, anthem effect creatures you control get plus one plus one it's not bad the next battle we have is invasion of dominaria this is a five power siege when invasion of dominaria enters the battlefield you gain four life and draw a card with two and a white that's not bad and then once you defeat it it flips to um sarah faith keeper a 4-4 angel with flying and vigilance that's pretty good our next battle is invasion of gobacon all these I've, so many of these places i've never heard of before i'm not super knowledgeable about the history of magic or older sets older lore so pardon me if i mispronounce things or don't know what we're talking about um, as far as locations and universes go um, so invasion of gobacon is one in a white for a rare three power battle when invasion of gobacon enters the battlefield look at the target opponent's hand you may exile a non-land card from it for as long as that card remains exiled its owners may play it a spell cast this way cause two more to cast so you get to make something more expensive on turn two which is pretty good and then once you get it down to zero health um you get light shield array it's an enchantment at the beginning of your end step put a one one counter on each creature that attacked this turn sacrifice light shield array creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn that's pretty good that's pretty good next up we've got um invasion of theros two and a white for a rare battle when invasion of theros enters the battlefield search your library for an aura god or demigod card reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle not too bad and then once you knock out its four power it turns into ephora ever sheltering a legendary enchantment creature god or four Ephra Ever Sheltering has lifelink and indestructible as long as you control at least three other enchantments. Whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This is because you don't have to have blue in your deck in order to play and cast this. Um, this goes right into that white and green um, enchantment deck that is sort of popular in standard. It's a near the bottom of the ladder in the meta right now but it's worthwhile it's a good deck uh next up we've got kithkin a billy rider oh he's riding a billy goat that's cute two and a white for a one three kithkin knight with double strike nice little standard knight Sorry, we're just being extra careful with the the pup for a little while. Again, we had like an emergency over the weekend. It was rough. Um, so I'm just keeping a closer eye on him than normal. Um, our next card is Knight of New Coalition. Of the New Coalition. Three and a white for a 2-2 human knight with vigilance. When Knight of the New Coalition enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 white and blue knight creature token with Vigilance. Nice. So we're going to have lots of Vigilant Knights. Which sucks because the Soldier deck is so popular right now in white and blue, so switching them all to Knights is kind of rude. Next up, we've got Knight Errant of Eos. Four and a white for a 4-4 human knight. This art is amazing. 
Um, this one has conv- Convoke, so again, you can tap creatures to pay for it. Uh, when Knight Errant of Eos enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal up to two creature cards with mana value X or less from among them, where X is the number of creatures that convoked it. Put the revealed cards into your hand, then shuffle. Wow. So if you convoke five creatures to pay for this, you can put two creatures with mana value five or less from among them into your hand. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Next up, we've got Core Halberd. One white for an equipment artifact. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. If you care about artifacts, you care about equipment. That's not bad. One, one, and vigilance. There's not a lot of equipment that gives vigilance, so that's pretty handy to have. Okay, he's just laying down now. That's good. Next up, we've got oh, some Mythic Monks. Monastery Mentor. Two and a white for a 2-2 two, two human monk with prowess. Nice. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Sorry, this creature, not that creature. So prowess is, uh, cares about spells. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white monk creature token with prowess. Oh, dang. Monks multiplying. Next up, we've got Norn's Inquisitor. Damn, that's cool. One and a white for a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Knight. When Norn's Inquisitor enters the battlefield, incubate two. When a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So this is nice because all of those incubator tokens, when you flip them, they, fl- they transform into a Phyrexian. So if you're building that sort of deck, then... Norn's Inquisitor is going to give them an extra counter, which is nice. Phyrexian Awakening. Two and a white for an enchantment. When Phyrexian Awakening enters the battlefield, incubate four. That's pretty good. Um, So you get one Phyrexian token with four counters on it. You pay two to transform it, and you have a four, four. It's, it's expensive to get there, but it's it's not bad. And the ability of this enchantment is Phyrexians you control have Vigilance. That's really good. There's a lot of Phyrexians in white. Next up, we've got Phyrexian Sensor. Look at that guy's neck. Two and a white for a 3-3 Phyrexian Wizard. Each player can't cast more than one non-Phyrexian spell each turn. Damn. Non-Phyrexian creatures enter the battlefield tapped. Double damn. All right. So it's truly going to be Phyrexia versus non-Phyrexia. Then we've got Protogenitor, Progenitor, Exarch, XX and White for a 1-2 Phyrexian Cat Cleric. When Progenitor, Exarch, enters the battlefield, incubate three X times. So if you pay two, two white, you get to incubate three twice. That's not bad. Or you play it on turn three and incubate three once. That's not bad either. And then this guy's ability is just tap X arc, transform target incubator token you control. So you don't have to pay the transformation cost. That's really good. Next up, we've got Realm Breaker's Grasp. Oh no, Realm Breaker... One and a white for an enchantment aura, enchant artifact or creature, enchanted permanent can't attack or block. And its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Interesting. All right. So it kind of shuts them down. I guess that's just the new like lockdown or whatever. Pacify. That's the word. uh, That's the one I was looking for. Next up, we've got Scroll Shift. Three and a white for an instant. Exile up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment you control. Then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control and draw a card. So an expensive blink that also cantrips. That's, it's not bad. Um, good reprint. Realm Breaker is okay. They can't all be planner disruption. True. <laughs> That's true. 
Uh, next up, we've got Seal from Existence. One white white for an enchantment with Ward 3. Interesting. I don't think we've ever seen an enchantment with Ward. When Seal from Existence enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Seal from Existence leaves the battlefield. Speaking of planner disruption, um, this is a amazing pacify. This is this is an amazing pacify that also has Ward Three, so it's even harder to kill than normal. That's that's quite effective, and it's only at uncommon too. Sheesh. Sheesh. All right. Next up, we've got Seraph of New Capenna. This is two and a white for a 2-2 two, two angel soldier with flying. You pay four and a Phyrexian black to transform it into Seraph of New Phyrexia. Oh, look at the arm, the little tendons. Terrifying. It is a 3-3 three, three Phyrexian angel with flying. Whenever Seraph of New Phyrexia attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or artifact. If you do, Seraph of New Phyrexia gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. Meh. Not astounding. Next up, we've got Sigiled Sentinel. Two and a white for a 2-2 two, two Human Knight with backup one and Vigilance. Um, so that's pretty good. Give something else Vigilance for the turn when you play this pre-combat. Even two extra mana is hard to commit to an enchantment. Three is just backbreaking. Yeah, that's it's really powerful. Seal from existence. That's very powerful. Furnace. Oh, no, this was backwards. Some of these saved in the wrong order. I don't know why. Um, so our next card is Sun Blessed Guardian. One and a white for a 2-2 human cleric. And its only ability is five and a Phyrexian red to transform it into Furnace Blessed Conqueror. A 3-3 three, three Phyrexian Cleric. Whenever Furnace Blessed Conqueror attacks, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on that token for each 1-1 one, one counter on Furnace Blessed Conqueror. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. I mean, that could do work. It's just really expensive. Like, 2 mana to play a 2-2, two, two, not that bad. But then you have to pay 5 and 2 life or 6 to transform it to get uh i mean i guess you're doing three six damage at minimum with the furnace bless conqueror i think it could be a limited bomb but on paper it doesn't look that great sunder the gateway is next one in a white for a sorcery choose one destroy target non-token artifact or enchantment an opponent controls then incubate two or you can incubate to then transform an incubator token you control. So, I mean, this is just a normal, like, destroy artifact or enchantment, but it has to be a non-token artifact. So you can't destroy someone else's incubator. Um, or you can incubate to and then transform an incubator. It's fun. I mean, I like the added... Um, thought process of do I want to take something of theirs or do I want to immediately get an incubator flipped interesting you can't destroy that seal from existence with this you pay two and then you have to, you have to pay, this is a five mana enchantment seal from existence removal that's a lot next up we've got sunfall three and a three white white for a sorcery exile all creatures Incubate X, where X is the number of creatures exiled this way. Holy shite. Shiza Manelli. That's a little crazy. Um, Wow, yeah. I mean, Sunfall is going to be huge. That's got to be... I mean, other than maybe White Sun's Twilight, this is probably the best... This is definitely going to be the best board wipe in standard. That's that's a lot. Does it, does it even say non-token? No, it doesn't. Exile all creatures. So if you're 
opponent has 12 creature tokens. You destroy all of those things and incubate 12. So you get one token with 12 counters on it. That's pretty crazy. Um, Surge of Salvation is next. It's one white for an instant. You and permanents you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Nice. Prevent all damage that black or red sources would deal to creatures you control this turn. Interesting. Specific protection against black or red is intriguing. Um, this is good. It's just a one white instant gain hexproof. Um, I think that this makes its way into standard a little bit. It's going to be a nice card to pick up in limited for sure. Next up, we've got Sword Sworn Cavalier. One and a white for a 3 1 human knight. Sword Sworn Cavalier has first strike as long as another knight entered the battlefield under your control this turn. Interesting. It's kind of meh. I like the art on it, though. This guy's like ripped off a Phyrexian weapon and then slice through their hands oh and their fingers too dang okay oh this one's backwards the next one is tarkir dune shaper one white for a one two dog warrior four and a green phyrexian to transform it into burnished dune stomper uh, it's a four three phyrexian dog warrior with trample that's pretty fine that's pretty fine uh, and then next up, we've got Tiller of Flesh. Ooh, look at that saw arm. Uh, three and a white for a 2-4 Phyrexian Knight. Whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, incubate two. This is going to play in that um, the Lesnia Toxic deck, I think. That's pretty good. Next up, we've got Zalfirin Lancer. Two and a white for a 3-3 three, three human knight. Whenever uh, another knight enters the battlefield under your control, Zalfirin Lancer gets 1-1 one, one and Vigilance until end of turn. Not bad. And that's it for white. I honestly think that Seal from Existence is my heavy hitter in white right now. I think that... Um... You know, Elspeth is going to be really powerful. That's a no-brainer. I think this is a... It does enough. It has a nice variety. Um, that it's going to be included in a lot of standard decks. It's obviously going to be a limited powerhouse. Um, the Elish Norn is pretty good. The backside of it can be really powerful and game-breaking. Um, but I think that the... The underdog card is going to be this um, seal from existence. I think for three mana to lock something down and have it protected with ward is pretty great. Yep. And then obviously Sunfall is my close runner up. I think this is an extremely powerful board wipe. Uh, not a lot of board wipes give you the power to, you know, swing back or or immediately build your board state built into the card. So I think that even if you have a decent board state, being able to wipe your opponent out and get something in return it is going to be pretty good. I still think White Sun's Twilight is better, but Sunfall is really powerful. Yep, and that's it for White. Uh, we will take...